Hey, Body Positive Yogis. Amber Carnes here from Body Positive Yoga, and I'm here today with the amazing Jessamine Stanley. Jessamine is a self-identified yoga enthusiast and fat femme and super inspiring uh, to the yoga Instagram community and to me personally. So I wanted to get with Jessamine today and just have a little conversation about yoga and body image and haters online and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, welcome, Jessamine. Thank you so much for talking to me, Amber. I'm really excited. I'm also like doing that weird thing where I'm like, I'm looking at you, but I'm also like just sort of whatever. I'm going to try not to be awkward. That's, that's what I'm with. Embrace yeah. the awkward. I try to usually like cause awkward as quickly as possible and then, you know, kind of puts people at ease. <laughs> I honestly think that me trying to stop it is just going to make it even more intense. So I'm just going to like be as flow as natural as possible. But hey, what's up? Good to talk to you. How's it going? Sounds good. So um, tell us your yoga story. How did you find yoga? How long have you been practicing and, and what keeps you practicing? all the way um I started practice well okay I practiced yoga for the first time when I was 16 and it was a horrible experience I went to a Bikram yoga studio with my aunt and she was really really into it at the time and she was like oh you'll really really like this and and I just did not take to it like the heat of the room and I think that when you're young you have difficulty understanding like that something difficult might be really good for you so I just found it to be like really really unpleasant and I mean one of the big things in Bikram is that you sh really shouldn't leave the room because the bo your body temperature when it shifts going out of the heat can just be really intense and I got really really nauseous and I was just like I'm never doing this again I'm done and then when I was in graduate school when I was 23 one of my classmates she was like go come to this Bikram class with me. They're doing, like, you can get a Groupon. It's only $30. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I already, I, like, I already know about yoga. It's stupid. I'm not doing this. And at the time, I was going through a really difficult time. My girlfriend at the time, um, we were breaking up. And I was recognizing that I was just really unhappy in my graduate program. And I just needed something to distract me, but also just create, like, a place of really pure happiness where it wasn't related to school and it wasn't related to love. It was just like, I have this on my own. And I think for that reason, I just really took to it like in a way that obviously I didn't before, but in a way that I'd never really taken to anything before. Like I had always wanted to be more active and had put a lot of effort into trying other kinds of sports and into like various like weight loss plans and nothing ever really stuck for me like yoga did. And after that first, that first month of the Groupon pass, I started doing a work study program at the studio where you could practice. Like, I can't remember now, I guess it was like maybe four or five times a week and in exchange for helping them to clean the studios. And so I started practicing a lot because of that. And it just became this refuge for me. Like I could go and really just put all of my energy into something and see these really positive results in myself, not in like the way that my body looked or sh was shaped or anything like that, but just in the, in my actual human expression. Like I just felt so much more positive overall. And so, um, but then I ended up leaving Winston kind of, a, um, I was living in Winston-Salem at the time. I ended up leaving Winston-Salem kind of abruptly. And when I moved to Durham, where I live now, I couldn't afford to practice at the Bikram Studios here because they're even more expensive. And I just basically stopped practicing for a little while. And then, um, I started going through some other really difficult times. My aunt passed away really unexpectedly. And then my grandmother got really sick shortly thereafter and passed away also. Um, my, uh, my roommate, now ex-girlfriend, uh, her brother passed away very unexpectedly. Just a lot of things happened. But during that time, it was like, I need something that can just they can ground me and center me and make sure that I don't fall off the face of the earth. And so I started practicing again at home and it was awesome because like, I always, I always get emails from people that are like, you know, I feel really uncomfortable in classrooms. And I'm like, dude, I get that. I, I was always the largest person in the classroom. And I, whenever I started practicing at home, it was like, 
wow, I can fall down, I can fart, I can do anything at any point. And it's totally cool because this is this is the place where I'm safest. So I started practicing every day just so that I could basically it was like free therapy. It was just like, you know, something to keep me sane. And everything that's come after that has been kind of strange and unexpected, but mostly for me, like as far as yoga is concerned, it's just it's my daily therapy that if I wasn't doing it, I don't know what I would be doing, honestly. It's, and I can't, I can't imagine my life without it at this point, but I mean, it's just so much more than I, I have the, what I've gotten out of it has been so much more than what I ever expected from what I, from where I started. Yeah. I think a lot of us feel that way. It's like we come to yoga to, you know, get more flexible or to lose weight or to whatever. And we end up in a completely different place. It kind of gives us a lot of different things. So very cool. Well, and the, the weird thing about that too, is that I tried for so long to lose weight. Like that was, it was such a huge part of my life. Like I remember when I was in college, I did Weight Watchers multiple times and I have a lot of mixed feelings about all of these different things. And I am um, like, I would go to the gym and you know, just like work out so hard. And I'd be like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing so much good for my body. And like nothing ever stuck. Like I couldn't, it was like, it took me completely not caring about anything. Like by the time I started practicing yoga daily, I was so unconcerned about my like bodily condition. I was just like, I just need for my head to not be crazy anymore. And it was like, oh, that's when it sticks. That's yeah. when you can start to do something. They, whenever you're not focused on it from a vanity standpoint, it's not like, oh, I have to look like this because, you know, someone, my mom, my family, my friends, whatever, they say that I should look like that. It's like once you recognize that, actually, I just need to be okay with myself, then you can reap all kinds of other rewards. It's yeah. crazy. Totally. Anyway. So um, a lot of folks have been inspired by you being online, being visible, practicing yoga as a larger woman, as a woman of color, um, which, you know, both of those body types don't get represented a lot in sort of like if you Google yoga, that's not who comes up. That's not who's going to be in the magazines or featured on the the kind of top yoga website. So um, will you talk a little bit about why you think visibility of diverse bodies is important in yoga? Um, I would say that it's probably like one of the most important things that we can do at this point, just being, because it's always really off putting and confusing for me whenever I get messages from people that are like, wow, I didn't know that I could do yoga until I saw you. And I'm like, literally that is a problem because there I am so far from the first person or even like in the first 50 people or even in the first 1000 people with different kinds of body to practice like there's people globally as long as we've existed and it's like I'm thankful for the internet I mean I have a lot of a lot of mixed feelings about the internet in general but I feel like I'm grateful that we finally have a platform to show people that you know we're like we out here for lack of a better phrase but it's like at the same time it's just it's just so so important to be visible because otherwise there are people who will just think like I mean there's so many people who are like wow you know I didn't know that a fat girl could do blah 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 and I'm like how did you not know like I'm just like what but I mean I get why you don't because there's so much like our the media is completely saturated with these images of people who are so not the norm like in general I mean even if you go like if you go to uh, any random yoga studio you are not even going to see like most of the people in the room are not even going to look like the general image of yoga bodies you know it's going to be like just anyone that you would see and that's really what I'm more interested in seeing it's like not just like larger bodied people or people of color but just like that random you know computer salesman who's like he likes to go to like Jiva Mukti classes at night you know what I mean like that one guy who's like he's not like the most flexible person but that is a real yoga body <laughs> you know, like, I don't think there's a certain level that you need to be at before you start showcasing something I think that just showing like your daily dedication to something is that's what's inspiring to people. And if anything, I would want to encourage like people 
of literally every kind of physical makeup to be more visible. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that, you know, one of the great things about visibility, and I also have very mixed feelings about the internet, but one of the awesome things about the internet is that, you know, we can, we can be our own publishers and, you know, the media, the media, you know, like (laughs) the man, um, they, you know, the, the powers that be that have the, the power to show us images don't normally show us uh, images of, of diversity. They show us things that will sell products. And so um, we start to see those images over and over and over again, and then we think something must be wrong with me because I don't look like that, when in actuality, mm-hmm. that doesn't represent reality. It's not diverse, and it's not, um, you know, the people that you see if you Google yoga or if you open Yoga Journal – Right. Like you said, they don't look like the people that you're going to see if you walk into any normal yoga class. I've been into yoga studios. It's been older people, men who never get almost never shown in in yoga contexts, um, people of color, Mm -hmm. like people of all ages. It's it's really diverse. And I think the more we can be visible, the the easier it is for for folks that are interested. I feel like men really are um, the like the group of people that are probably shown the absolute least and even when they are shown it's of like pretty specific kinds of male bodies and I'm really really naive to the to the body issues that men deal with and I'm always really like shocked by them whenever my male friends tell me like like okay for example I have a who a man that I think is like very traditionally attractive he's like very tall and lanky and white and like very slender he has this body that I think that most, I I would just like, if I were a man, I'd be thinking like, Oh, this is the man that I would want to look like. But I remember we had this really incredible conversation one time where he was talking about how he hated his body for like the vast majority of his life because he was, he's not broad chested at all. He's so small. And he was like, um, I was like, why would you want to be like, I mean, like, does it matter if you're broad chested? And he was like, well, I mean, it doesn't look very manly. And I was like, Hmm whoa, y'all have issues too. It's just crazy. And it's, it's funny because they really are. I mean, like there's so many men who will be like, yeah, you know, I practice yoga, but (laughs) you know, I can't do that because I'm like, because what, because we have all of these crazy ideas. I mean, just the fact that whenever you think about a yoga body, you're thinking about a female body is so intimidating to men. And it's just, it's interesting. That's a, um, that's an area that I haven't really figured out, like how to, how to, how to include them in the conversation even more, because I feel like that's something that really gets overlooked. It's like our um, emphasis on female bodies, but anyway. So I know you've gotten some negative feedback and nasty comments about your body from time to time. How do you deal with haters on the internet? Largely, I just ignore them. I, I just ignored them. Um, I I was made fun of so much in my youth that by this point I've recognized that like anyone who has something bad to say about my body is really just projecting stuff that they feel about themselves and they don't know how to get it out. And the internet is like the best place to do that because you don't, you literally can just say anything and no one's going to come back to you, which to me is like unbelievably cowardly because I'm thinking like, I mean, you got something to say, like say it to my face and most, and typically I've noticed that when I write the comments that I get that are the nastiest are on things where it's, I'm least likely to see it. Like usually on like, images on my blog or images on my Instagram. Like there are people like I'll get nasty comments sometimes, but it's usually like on something where the person is like, yeah, (laughs) you know, I can just go in on this person because if they did it really close to me, they'd be like, they would, I think that I'm radiating too much positivity for them to feel like it's appropriate. So that that is my defense is to just be continuously positive because like I can't control how someone else is going to like, feel like they want to unload their bad day. Like someone had a day of someone belittling them in their personal life. And then they get home and they see a picture of this fat girl in her underwear. And they're like, I can't believe she would think to do that. I'm just going to do blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? Honestly, I feel bad that you felt like that was how you wanted to spend your afternoon. Like (laughs) making sure that you like 
got out all because I'm like, how did you even have time? You know, like you see stuff on the internet that you don't like. I'm not like in the comment section, you know, going in on them. I might like if I had a comment to make, I might keep it in my head and then I move on with my life because yeah. who who's got time for that? So that mostly I I ignore it because it's not worth my energy and because it's just like why would you feed into somebody else wasting their life away? It's like yeah. I don't want to be a part of that. So totally. I don't. I mean, it's just so it's futile and a lot of it's futile to say anything. And I don't know. I, I it also just makes me judge people, and I hate judging people. But I'm just like, oh, you're one of those. Yeah, okay. I feel you on that <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you had a big, uh, feature in People Magazine, a really cool video with them recently, and they called you a yoga star, and you have a huge, you know, social media following, which is really awesome. Um, how do you feel about the attention that you've gotten online? Like, what's the most, maybe most awesome thing about it, and, like, the worst thing about it? I would say that the most awesome thing is getting to connect with other people and recognizing that like there are people who are really finding a new part of their lives that they maybe it would have taken them longer to get there had they not seen a picture of me like that's really awesome I just don't ever want to become the kind of person who thinks of themselves as a yoga star you know what I mean like I don't I don't feel like that's a really healthy attitude I don't feel like it's the purpose of my practice I don't feel like it's helping anyone um I think it's fine if other people see that but I feel like largely I just want to continue to like do my daily therapy and photograph it for the purpose of alignment and connect with other people who want to further themselves and just sort of like you know leave it there because otherwise it just becomes something that is not I think it's not inherently positive, and I'm not about that life. Tell us what you have uh, coming up that you're excited about, um, that you want other other people to know about. Well, I think that right now I'm most excited excited about my teacher training. Um, I was really apprehensive about doing teacher training before, just because there are so many there's so many teachers, and I didn't know if like my voice was something that really needed to be in a classroom environment but I just really feel called to do it in a way that I've never really felt called to do anything else and I'm really looking forward to like deepening my knowledge and especially in terms of like anatomy and being able to like call upon um just being able to call upon a wealth of information to share with other people I'm really looking forward to and I do have a lot of other projects um like partnerships and collaborations that are coming up some of which I can't really talk about right now but um I think the thing that I'm most excited about is just like becoming really deeply embedded in in my practice so that I can help other people in their practices and the training is going to be a month of my life where like I'm completely uprooted from my life here in Durham and I'm going to Asheville and it's going to be I have no idea what I'm going to be like on the other end of it. Like, who knows? I might be, it might literally be a completely different person. And I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to what that will do to my, um, to my classes, like teaching in, especially in an online capacity. I have a lot of um, ideas and things in the works and I'm excited to see what that's going to look like in the long term. And I'm excited to see what it's going to be like to, to connect with people on an even deeper level than this sort of like visual call and response sort of thing. Like I'm, I'm interested in really creating a dialogue with people. Yeah, totally. I I was talking to Diane Bondi the other day about that, actually, that, you know, there's only really a handful of us that are sort of doing this type of work, you know, visibly online and we don't really get to talk with each other that much, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to start doing these interviews because Um, I feel like all of us are more than, you know, we're, we're bigger than the sum of our parts. And if we can build that kind of community, then, you know, who knows what we'll do. Um, so, because that, I mean, especially if you look like any kind of movement or any kind of, I mean, it takes 
a lot of different people coming at it from different kinds of perspectives and coming out of different, um, just all the different origin points binding together to really make a new movement. And I actually think that's what we're heading toward. And, and so I'm, I'm thrilled to just be a part of it. You know, it's, it's just so not a one way street or even like a two way street. It's this multi-lane highway that, I mean, I'm glad I'm on. Yeah. I'm glad I'm on. Highway. Yeah, definitely. What's uh, one last parting gift, parting piece of body positive sort of advice that you would give to anyone who's watching this video? Don't sell yourself short. And that means so many different things to me. You know, don't think that, oh, I'm going to start practicing yoga because I want to lose weight or I want to, you know, I want my body to look like this or whatever. I think that's selling yourself short because you don't, that's sort of like a secondary thing, you know? And then even like, even if you go into it saying, I need to find a spiritual purpose, I need a spiritual base, that's still kind of selling yourself short. I think that if nothing else, if you've ever, you know, just felt down about yourself, if you felt like you couldn't quite get a hold on on reality or like you needed something to stabilize you, let that be the reason to practice yoga. And then everything else that comes with it, just don't don't expect, don't don't predetermine, just put yourself into it, your purest self into it. And you'll reap so much more than you would by selling yourself short. Totally. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today, Jessamine. We uh, love getting to interact with you this way and not just from far across the room uh, watching you do your amazing asana practice. But um, I really appreciate your time and thank you for what you're doing to, to help the body positive yoga movement. We, we love it whatever thank you for doing everything that you do seriously and i hope that this is i hope this is the beginning of much more for all of us for sure all right thanks a lot see you later